Thanks to those who attended LinkedIn Local Perth this month. And if you're catching the recording because you missed it, this is a bit of a summary. So we talked about creating meaningful relationships. Now, a relationship is just, you know, two or more people or things being connected. A meaningful relationship are those that are deemed as significant and include mutual respect, trust, interest, positive regard, and making the other person feel valued. So in this um, discussion, Joe Harper facilitated a conversation around um, relationship building in, in the room and you know how we do that big picture. And then I relate it back to LinkedIn. So we first talked about the categories of people you've got in your network and we brainstormed that. So have a look at the, the list that we brainstormed. But you've got to think about when you're having, you know, when you're thinking about how you interact with somebody, who are they to you and who are you to them? And where are you in that stage of that relationship? Because if you've just met them, they're not ready to buy from you and they're not ready to maybe to be asked for that big favor. So you've got to earn that, earn that right to, to ask for these things. And with each group of people, you want to think about how do you need to show up for that particular group? So how you show up to someone who's a potential client is going to be very different to how you show up for someone who is a supplier or a mentor um, or a peer. So just have a think about that. So when, And the reason we wanted to frame this at the beginning is to get you thinking about this when, you, when it comes to LinkedIn. So when you're connecting to people, when you're engaging with people, you're going to show up differently for different groups of people. And some people, it might be the, the placement might be different. And then with all these different groups of people, how do you prioritize who you're going to spend time engaging with and why? You know, who are, like I said, who are they to you and why do they matter? And why do you matter to them? So you might prioritize potential clients if you're in, in a business and you're selling your products or services. You might uh, prioritize uh, referral partners for the same reason because they might be supplying you work and maybe you're helping them as well you might be prioritizing your community members if you're building that strong community so it depends on your purpose so everybody's going to have their own reason to have a relationship with someone that's meaningful to you and them that's different going to be different between somebody else and we talked about this um briefly in the room you know At the beginning of our events, we have time for networking and introduction. And this particular event, probably two thirds of the people in the room were first timers to the event. So may may have not known each other. So of course we've got people that come to our events um, on a regular basis who also didn't know people. So we just got you to think about how did you actually introduce yourself and how did did that person introduce themselves to you? And then when when you look at that on, on, on LinkedIn, you know, are we doing the same thing? So in person, we're a lot more conversational generally. We don't go up to the person and say, you know, this is what I do. You don't talk at someone. You don't sell them in that first Mm -hmm. conversation. But in in person, you're sort of building that rapport. You're looking for things in common. And when, you know, you've asked what the other person does and they tell you a bit about them, they're going to then ask you in return. It's how a conversation works. But unfortunately, people don't do that on LinkedIn or some people don't. They go straight into the cell. They're not listening and they're not building those meaningful relationships. So with LinkedIn, your location actually really matters in the relationship because you've got to be really conscious of where you are and who can see. So in a face-to-face networking event or even a Zoom conversation, only the people in that, in that Zoom meeting or at that event who are in you know, um, ear, earshot are going to hear the conversation. So it's public, but it's, it's restrained. On LinkedIn, it's pub- public is public. So if you're responding to a post on LinkedIn, responding to something in the feed, commenting on someone's activity. That is public, meaning all their connections and network can see it and all yours can. And anybody who goes to that person's profile and looks at their activity will see your comment. So you really have to think about, once again, who are you being? How are you showing up for that type of relationship and that person? So what category are they in? And how, you know, and even within the category, how important are they to you? How important are you to them? So you're going to, you know, prioritize things differently and show up differently some relationships you're going to be taking it into the private aspect of linkedin which is through private messaging or it might be organizing a zoom catch-up or or a coffee in person so you want to make sure that you know you're really conscious of are you doing this publicly are you doing this privately on why and there are you know there are reasons for both private obviously it's between you and the person you're 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 developing a, a more deeper relationship with an individual when you go public you're, you know, you're starting or, or continuing a relationship with someone, 
but you're also exposing that person to your network because of how LinkedIn works. You're supporting them. So there's many reasons you can be seen um, to be interacting with them, supporting them, amplifying them and getting to know them. And you could ask a question and then you might take it into a private scenario because certain things you're not going to say publicly. So then you got to think about when you do engage on LinkedIn publicly, does that match the relationship? So just reminding yourself before you hit post, does this, is this going to serve you and the relationship? So from a, a self-serving perspective, does it position you well? Does that comment make you look good? Does it make you look like a good person, a nice person to know? Or does it make you look like, you're very self-focused and does it make how would it make the person feel so if you jump into a conversation and talk about um, maybe they've, they've, you know there's a discussion and you've jumped in and said I've got a blog about this here's a link or oh I've, I've got an event you should come to my event or I've got a product that can solve this problem firstly it, it could be too soon and it's public so people are seeing this and making a judgment on who you are but also is it the right thing to do in a public arena that's going to match that part of the relationship and then how do you maintain your connection with, with the people in all the different aspects of, of the relationship or the, the, the categories that they're in? Because you want to keep in touch. But LinkedIn doesn't give you a great way, great way to do this because you're not reminded of when to keep in touch with people. So initially, all you've got is really you go to LinkedIn, you might get some notifications. So where people are responding to things or you've got the social trigger type no notifications where someone's having, a, having an anniversary, a birthday, things like that, things that you can interact with. Then you've got messages, obviously, to respond. So you've got those triggers and then you've got the home feed and the home feed will deliver content it thinks you're most interested in right now. It's all algorithm driven. So that's one way to maintain your connections, but you're at the mercy of LinkedIn. But going back to the categories, if you know where people fit in and you've prioritized them, I always uh, teach my clients to create a bit of a, a hot list, we'll call it, um, where you might pick 20 of your ideal clients. Some of these people might be people you're connected to right now or people you want to connect with. Maybe, they're tw um, maybe you've picked five industries or five um, types of roles and then you've mapped out who they are and then you've got a process of what you're going to do next. So I'm calling this a LinkedIn relationship game. So you start along this process and it's going to be different for everybody depending on, on your objectives and who you are. So a first point of call might be even before connecting. So say you're in person, you're at our event, you've met someone new. So you have a conversation. What's the next step? It probably is to connect on LinkedIn if you're not already connected. Appropriate because you've already connected that person. How you do it, you know, send a personal message. Remind them where you met, which is also reminding your future self where you met in case you forget. And um, then what to do next? Well, you could just wait. If you just sit back and, you know, after you've connected on LinkedIn and wait for something to happen, you're at the mercy of the algorithm. And then you're waiting for notifications. You're waiting to be alerted that something's happening. They've done something. They might have even posted something. You might get a notification about that. But what you want to do is be proactive. So rather than being reactive, be proactive. And this is where you can map out your own journey. Now, um, it could be a spreadsheet. It could be... Um, a, create your own flow chart and those stages then are reminders you're going to put into your CRM, into your calendar, whatever system you're using. So that, you know, once you've connected, what next? Do they respond? How do they respond? If they don't respond, if they just hit accept and they don't respond to your introduction, introductory message, then you might have a message you send as a, you know, thank you for connect, you know, accepting my connection request, looking forward to having you in my home feed, um, you know, and then ask a question, something that doesn't look like it's going to lead to a buy my stuff because people won't respond to that particularly well. So it's just being interested in them and getting that, that conversation going. Now, if you met the person in person initially, staying going online and going through that, after a few interactions online, the objective might be to have a one-to-one -one coffee. So if you're in the same location, fantastic, book that coffee in. And I challenge you um, as a result of coming to LinkedIn Local, if you're at this event, pick someone or a couple of people that you met that you're interested in, you know, that, that you want to get to know them more. You know, they could be, are they a referral partner, potential client? Are they someone you can learn from, mentor? Pick some people and go through your own process and book a coffee with them. We've got some really generous, um, wise people in our, in our community who are worth getting to know better. So you could do that. Now, if, you, if you're watching this recording and you weren't there, then think about people you've met at previous LinkedIn local events. Who have you met in the past and you haven't done anything with? You haven't followed up. 
So make sure you're connected on LinkedIn, look for opportunities to engage, and then book that coffee. But really cle be clear, because when people book a coffee, you can't just go, oh, we should catch up a coffee. Because really, you know, they might be thinking, why? People are time poor, so tell them why. You know, are you looking to, uh, to learn more about their industry? Are you looking for some advice or some guidance or to, you know, to, to, um, to, to work out how you can refer business to them? So just look at all these different things and then map out a journey. And then after that, what's next? Well, in between, you're going to be interacting on LinkedIn. So you might have reminders to go to their activity. Where have they been sharing publicly? Where can you get into the conversation and add some value? Otherwise, you might miss things because you're then, you know, you're relying on the algorithm otherwise. And as I mentioned in the, um, in the session, don't be afraid to unfollow people that you connect to because you're making space in the feed for people you want to see first. So follow just means you want to see that person first. And if you don't want to, unfollow them because you can always go to their profile and see their activity. So that's just an insight into how you can build relationships on LinkedIn. And then down the track as you've, you know, as you're continuing on, there's going to be a point where that person has a problem that they know you solve and now they're ready to investigate it. Or they know someone who needs your help. So that's where the referral partners come in. So don't devalue the, um, you know, people who could be referral partners. It's quite powerful. So that's the topic in a nutshell. I'd love to know what you got from this and what you're going to do as a result. And if you're free on the 30th of November, it's our final event of the year. We're doing a, um, a fun event. It's going to be about what not to do on LinkedIn and how to do it better. And we, there's going to be a bit of role playing involved. Uh, not from me, from some of our community who have um, volunteered. And, and it'll be interactive and um, just, you know, a discussion. So you know, never going to be put on the spot but you can interact in the conversation. And like I said, it will be a lot of fun. And the event is completely free for our community members. So no cost to, to attend and the first drink's free. So get in early so you can get a place. Um, and, you know, if you've got people who, who may be interested in coming along, send them the link. And if you do need some help with LinkedIn, always speak to me because that's what I do. I've just re-released my seven-day LinkedIn challenge. That's the link on screen, but um, you'll get the link in the email because you can't really, you know, you've got to get your phone out now and... Um, you know, scan the QR code, um, but you can go through that where I go through seven parts of LinkedIn that um, can help you just get, get moving or, or reassess where you're at right now. And if you need some help around uh, your business visions and around leadership, speak to Jo so you can book a session with her, a 30 minute chat um, and see how she can help you. So thanks for watching this quick um, summary. Hopefully it's been helpful and got you, got you thinking about how you can do things better. If you need to know the hows, how to actually do the things I've talked about, it's all part of my online program and I'm just updating all the content, which is super exciting. So if you want to be part of that, let me know. And I'm, I'm going to be giving some people early access for a fraction of the fee. So if that's of interest to you, let me know. But if you're just wanting a bit of a taster and a few tips, 7 Day LinkedIn Challenge is your first start port of call. Thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you at the next LinkedIn Local Perth.